this week is all about texture and today we're finding textures around the house and we're going to use them in our artwork so the first thing you want to do is go around your house and find some things that have cool textures meaning they feel bumpy or rough um, i have some examples here that i'm going to show you of some things that you might have in your house that you can use for this project so this is a spatula and I'm gonna be using this part of the spatula because when I color on top of it on my paper, it'll have this line design. I've also grabbed, um, this is a tray to put corn on the cob and on the inside, it's got this really cool bumpy texture. This bowl has a bumpy dot texture around the edge. I have this lid for storing pet food in the fridge. And then this is a noodle strainer and the whole side and the bottom would be great textures. Now, other places in your house that you might have textures, this is a candle holder. So it just holds a candle, but the texture on the outside is a herringbone pattern and that will make a great texture. An empty basket, um, the sides, that would be a good texture. And then you could also use art supplies. So I can put a bunch of these Chanel sticks together to create kind of a bumpy texture. And then you can find anything in your house that might be like a cutout word or a picture like this because you can put paper on top and rub the letters or the picture out. So go in your house and find some of these. You probably only need about six. If you can only find a few, that's okay too. So the art supplies you'll need once you've found all your textures are some white paper, crayons, and then I'm going to be doing a watercolor wash on top of my textures, which is optional. But if you're going to be painting, you're going to need some watercolor paints, paint brushes, a water cup and paper towel. And make sure you're working on a wipeable surface or you have a mat. And if you're worried about your clothes, wear an apron. Okay, guys, let's get started creating some textures on our paper. All right, so what we're going to do with our textures is we're going to put whatever the texture is under our paper and we're going to place the paper on top. Then you need a crayon and preferably this crayon has no paper on it because you're going to hold the crayon down on its side like this. Normally we hold a crayon like this and you color on the end. Today we're holding the crayon on the side and we're going to do this motion on top of the texture. Now make sure your paper isn't moving around like this. So one hand keeps the paper in place and then the other hand is going to move the crayon around on the texture. And that's the cool texture I got from this. So I'm going to set this aside unless you like that texture and you want to include it somewhere else on your paper. Really depends on how many textures you found. If you only found a few textures, then you're gonna wanna use each check textures a couple of times. Okay, so I'm gonna find another crayon that has no paper on it, and I'm gonna grab another texture, place it under, and then hold down the paper with one hand and rub back and forth with the other hand. The goal here is that you want to cover the entire paper with textures. If your textures overlap a little bit, that's totally okay. And I'm going to use this texture again because I really like the color and the lines it's creating. And I want my paper to be really colorful, so I'm going to grab a different crayon and a different texture. I'm going to place it under my paper and then hold down with one hand and color and rub with the other. 
This texture was cool because it's got a cat and a dog design on it, but it's also a fun, bumpy texture. And I'm gonna do that one twice on my paper. And then I like how they overlap here so you can see two textures at once. Okay, grab another color and another texture. And sometimes these can be a bit tricky to color, so just make sure you're holding it down. Maybe if you have someone else at your house, they can help you and put that texture on your paper. And we're gonna continue doing this so that our entire paper is full of textures. You wanna get a lot of coloring done on this paper. This texture will look great when I paint on top of it. I'm gonna do it again over here. There's lots of white spaces, so the paint will show through on that texture really good. And these crayons I'm using, that's the Lego crayon I made from How to Make Recycled Crayons, working really well. All right, now let's do this. See how this works out. Ooh, yeah. Let me get some letters in there. You can see tons of overlapping, which is great when we're talking about textures. so it's going to be really rolly. So I'm just holding it down really good to create that cool texture. And because I'm using the recycled crayons, I'm getting multiple colors at once here. I really like this crayon, how it's giving me a bunch of colors and texture all at the same time. Okay, my entire paper is covered in textures, so I'm gonna set up for paint and I'll be right back to show you how to paint the watercolor wash on top. I have all my paint supplies ready to go. I've pre-moistened my watercolor palette. Now, if you are starting out with a fresh watercolor palette and you haven't used it yet today, make sure you use a wet paintbrush and you kind of tickle and brush the colors a little bit to wake them up because they tend to get really dry when they sit out. I used a water spray bottle and I kind of put a little bit of drops of water in all of mine and I've let it sit here for a little bit. So if you spray just a tiny little bit of water and you let it sit for a while, the colors will moisten all on their own. So you're going to pick a color and you want to lightly paint the color right on top. You don't need a ton of any of the color to do this. If you use too much of the color, it can actually paint right over and you lose part of your texture. You wanna make sure you clean off your brush in between colors. And I am just going to work on painting my whole paper and I want to be really careful that I don't leave too much paint on the paper because I still want to be able to see the colors 
um, of my textures once this dries. You can use any color of paint. You can actually even paint black on top of this, a black watercolor, um, and that looks really, really beautiful. Um, and it also makes the color stand out a bit. Um, because it's springtime and I want my paper to be a little bit more vibrant color, I'm using rainbow colors. But your paper, you can do whatever you want. It does not need to look like mine. I'm washing my brush off in between colors, making sure to move the paint around the page so that I don't get pools of watercolor paint to cover up my textures. And you don't have to use a ton of paint when doing this. Um, because you really want your textures to stick out more than the paint. The paint is just to cover up all the white spaces. This is why it's important to have a wipeable surface in front of you. Too much. I'm gonna pat some of that paint off so it doesn't cover up my texture and then move the rest around. The color is very dark. All right and that's it. Easy peasy coloring your texture paper with watercolor paint. Look at that it's so beautiful. All right, guys, I hope you had fun with this. I can't wait to see what you do. Don't forget to turn in pictures of your assignments on Google Classroom or tag me on social media. All right, guys, bye.